What a year. What a what? Now, some years I've said, wow, this year went fast. So, no, this year for me, I don't know about for you, this was a year. This was a year that got my attention. And when it got my attention, I was like, I can't get past this. The reason I say what a year, because some of us found out that emotional pain came in many forms. Worst of all, a failure that is our own fault. We had pain, and we made some failures, and it brought pain. Humiliation and rejection by others. Heartache, job loss, sting of injustice, frustration. Sting of injustice, frustration, grief over a hard-headed, rebellious child who didn't seem to be lining up with what you wanted. Anxiety, the anxiety of a breadwinner because you're the sole winner, but your finances are being touched. The business that you tried to start turned sour. Dull ache of loneliness. You're tired of being by yourself. Career that never developed. Unfulfilled dreams. Frustrations over dash hopes. The sting of injustice. Uh, uh, and I said that stabbing pain of unexpected grief. Many of us went through some things this year, didn't we? To look up and realize your finances are a lot tighter than what you thought it was. To realize that your health, some of us had some health issues. Some of us got some diagnosis. Some of us went to some things. Some of us found out that we neglected our body so long, but now our body is telling on us. And that was our own fault. This has been a year what a what year. In the midst of our emotional pains, we often, we, we, we often were, we were often called upon to help, often called upon to help bear the pain of others and friends and relatives. So it wasn't, a, it wasn't just that you went through this year. You can bring it down. It wasn't that you just went through this year. You had to stand with other people. You had to stand with relatives that was having a problem. You had to stand with them. And I don't know if you ever felt it this year. You're like, I got my own problems. But at the same time, you knew I needed to be there for them because that's what your spirit said to do. We must have our eye on God and to his hand in everything that befalls us. This year was about putting your eyes on God and not your circumstances. And seeing that he is a part of everything that has befalled you. And when I say befalled you, I'm saying that you got to consider what God has done. Read this next one. It's on, it says, who can straighten? Bring that up. It's maybe too small. Go. Who can straighten what he has made crooked? When times are good, be happy. But when times are bad, consider this. God has made one as well as the other. Therefore, no one to discover anything about their future. I didn't learn this about suffering. It ain't over until it's going to be over. And you can't go and discover anything, anything, without first going through suffering. He says, what has made what was straight crooked? Some of us had plans, and those plans got dashed. So by the time you say we had ups and downs, it's because you have the romantic notion of a business starting, but you did not have the notion of getting your butt whooped. You didn't have no romantic fantasies on how we're going to come up with this, and I didn't even think about that, and now we got this, and I didn't even know we needed this kind of license, and what we're going to do. What happens when a path that you was on turns crooked? What, happens, what happened to you this year when your child just cut up? What happened to, thank you, to some of us this year when some of us lost some friends this year? I had to make some crucial decisions this year. I had to look at my life and say, you are struggling with an issue. You don't have zero time for negativity in your space. And if they don't do the will of God, then they ain't worthy of your company. I walked away from some good friends. Y'all ain't listening to me. And I thought I was going to be curled up in a ball. And God said, I've just been trying to get you to myself all alone. I've been trying to have you text me, not other people. Communicate with me, not other people. 
And I said, I don't need nobody in my space that ain't doing the will of God. Listen, don't wait till you got to go through fighting cancer to figure that one out. Oh, this is the fight of my life, but guess what? I'm game for it. It busts me up. This daggone fatigue be getting me with this stuff. But, and I, I get it, but guess what? You ain't stopping me. You ain't, listen, let's keep going. I don't, I, I'm sorry, let me just keep going. Therefore, no, 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 no. God will bring a crooked event or set of events into your life. You will become acutely aware that only he can straighten it. See, I want you to understand that there's a lot of things we were able to do, but now we've become acutely aware. If this don't happen, and see, I prophesied about y'all. I told you, I said, Jill, let me explain something to you. Watch your friends because money is going to get real tight with everybody. And when the money gets tight, people tighten up. And you will become an object of envy because you saved your money. Y'all ain't listening to me. Sometimes your family think they ought to get money from you because they think you got money, but you sacrificed. And the season is coming where I, can't, I can give you some sugar, I can give you a little bit of milk, and if you need some food. But outside, that $500 loan, who is you? You ain't nobody. This is and will be the season to silence our complaints concerning these cross-crooked events. See, God was trying to do all year long, and some of you may just be getting it. Stop complaining. Start seeing where I blessed you. Some of us saw where God blessed us in the midst of our mess. We said, God is faithful because the way I was acting, he should have never came through for me. Let us consider the hand of God in them and not open our mouths against that which he is doing. I didn't learn, shut up, mind your business, you got your own darn problems. You don't need to be meddling in other people's affairs. I don't even want to know what you're going through unless God has assigned me to know that. Why? Because when you understand you got enough concerns of your own, you realize you ain't got time to email and text nobody and get them told. Y'all ain't listening to me. See, when, you, when, you, when you're a dominant person, you always got a word from somebody. You always got a thing of correction or get them straight. And you got to get your two cents in. You better mind your business. Because all y'all got a day that's coming. The questions this season was supposed to bring up. Can, read that. Can I trust God whether or not he straightened my crooked, crook or relieve my distress? Did I really believe that God, who loved me and knew what was best for me, he was in control of my situation? Could I trust him even if I didn't understand? Further, could I encourage others to trust him when they were in the throes of emotional pain? Can you really trust God? I sympathize with those who find it difficult to trust God in adversity. Y'all ain't seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing yet. I remember in 2010, I began to prophesy, and I was crying, and God was bringing me out into my own. He was bringing this out. He was bringing, say, be yourself. Don't you wait till 65 to start acting like you are, like you're going to be free. Be free now. Dress the way you want to dress. I know men think I'm gay when they see me. I don't care. I know what time it is. And they give me looks, and I look back at them. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. I now know. Just don't give them the look. Hey, what's up? Okay, let's keep going. Just want to make sure. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with it, but just ain't no way for me. In order to trust God, we must always view our adverse circumstances, pick it up, through the eyes of faith, not sense. Keep going. So faith comes by hearing what is told, and what is heard comes by preaching on the, me of the message that came from his lips. Now listen, somebody had to preach to themselves this year. 
If you didn't, you're not alive. Pick it up. So David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of the people was all grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. I went through that this year. Everybody is dealing with their own family issues. And they can't differentiate you got some family problem that's driving you crazy, but now you're taking that out on other people because you're distressed. And you often go against the one that led you to the freedom. You often talk about your parent, and she's the one that wiped your butt. You always go that route. And he said, he says, for the people spank against him in stoning. I want you to feel that he was feeling depressed. He was feeling bothered. He was going through. That's a misspell. People are going to going through with their own homes. But David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. We say, but David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. Somebody had to encourage themselves in May. January. Somebody had to encourage themselves in March. I don't, rem- I don't th- know if you remember, but you was getting ready to go deep down into despair, but you had to encourage yourself and say, get up, you got to go to work. Get up, you got to keep going. Get up, you can't figure this one out. Get up and keep moving forward. David could not allow, David could allow the grief and bitterness to conquer. If he had allowed the grief and bitterness to conquer him, he would sink into the black hole of depression and give up and quit, or he could fight back. If you look at even in David's life, you know he went down and played some music. You know he played the harp. You know he wrote some poems. You know he sat down. You know he danced. You know he worshiped. Why? Because the only way out of this darkness. See, I found out that the darkness then followed most of us most of our lives. We just didn't know that God was giving us an ability to overcome it. But when that dark cloud comes over you, listen, the dark cloud is the same cloud as racism. I've been watching Trump, and I've been saying, this is the spirit of racism. Not that he's racism, but the very spirit that they're operating in as a people. When a group of white men can overlook a man that said, grab the vajayjay and make him president. It's no different than Mississippi burning. And the people sat on the, the, uh, what do you call it, the jury and voted people guilty. And they knew the man wasn't guilty. Or they said they was innocent, and they knew the man wasn't innocent. Because racism silences your voice. And the authority works over you. The same thing with the darkness. It oppresses you that you've had it, that you don't get to think your own thoughts. I hope y'all are hearing me. God's guidance is almost always step by step. Read it with me. He does not show us our life's plan all at once. Sometimes I, the anxiousness to know the will of God becomes a desire to peer over God's shoulder to see what his plan is. Come here, come here, man. Come here. Come here, Zach. You're God. You're bald-headed. You should work. You're God. Just do like this. What we want to do, if he's God, he's, say, I got this in control. Just go ahead and walk trying to peer and hold God and peer over his shoulder to figure out what he going to Zach, you're too daggone strong, man. Now don't make me work too hard. You got to not peer over God's shoulder because you don't know what he's going to do. Now, y'all listen to me. Listen, I had no idea. Been praying to become a nice man for God knows how long. I'm so happy with being kind because I ain't got no more stress. He want to fuss at me at the restaurant? Hey, it's okay. I'm good. See, because when life hands you a ticket that says, get it together, little things become precious. Come on with me. Let's take this ride. Come on, ride this train. When one's expectations are reduced to zero, I'm already on it. Read it with me. When unexpectations are reduced to zero, one really appreciates everything that one has, and suddenly the small pressures, pressures become precious. A person faced with extreme hardship must press themselves to get tougher. Whining and self-pity 
as logical as they seem, are deadly indulgences. Takes you to the dark space. Y'all got that? Now, some of y'all, I'm doing something different this year than I never did before because I'm preparing you for what is to come. Normally, I would come through and God has did this for you and God and God said, ain't time for that no more. War, 1201. Did y'all hear me? War, 1201. Iran is up in arms right now. War, 1201. War, 1201. Mark my words. I'm not your pastor. I'm your equipper. And my goal is to prepare you for when we can't meet together. Y'all didn't hear me. You think the internet's going to last forever. You think connectivity, you, we are so trusted in the spirit of man that we don't believe it's going to shut down. Ask us why we was in Atlanta. Is man infallible? Not in Atl Atlanta. Because we shut the whole air. How does a whole busiest airport in the world get shut down? No generators. They want to tell us it was a rat. Who is you? You ain't nobody. I'm almost there. Y'all be bear with me, amen? I worked on this message. This is my third message. I've been working on this since I came home to say, no, God, we got to get this out. Hey, y'all, I'm so encouraged. Let me tell you something. Once that devil steal your confidence, you got to fight like hell to take it back from him. Or you got to fight hell to snatch it back from him. So the way I'm talking right now, that devil was trying to get my confidence because at some point, I, but in this year, see, in this year, I didn't think I would even be able to teach anymore. My wife saw me crying. I'm saying, I don't know what's happening. But God, listen, hard times and emotional, physical toughness. Then the opposite, listen, read this with me. If it is accurate to say that hard times often lead to emotional and physical toughness, then the opposite must also be true, must be valid. And what do I mean by that? We have been made soft and vulnerable by materialism and ease. Prolonged prosperity has given us all a seductive love of comfort. Things have been good so long for us that we don't even understand. History will say, history said in the 1920s, it was the roaring 20s. And after a holiday, I think it was Memorial Day or Labor Day weekend, and everybody was on the, which, which one they all go to the beach? Memorial Day weekend. That week, the stock market crashed. Wake up! Look at the news. See it. Stock market, the highest that it's ever been. It's unsustainable. You're going to need somebody this year. You're going to need somebody this year coming up. I know this for sure. Y'all with me, right? I got 10 more slides. Could it be that our Heavenly Father permits his children to struggle in order to keep us strong? Could that be the case? Some of us know without a shadow of a doubt because, Clayton, you know without a shadow of a doubt. The clearest I ever heard you talk because you talked all that dumb stuff a few months ago because you was caught up, but you've been fighting since Wildflower. And when you sat there and you couldn't move, I don't care what anybody else thought about what you were going through, no one else understands unless they've been through the demons that are attached to your soul when you're physically and verbally abused. And it takes you sometimes until you're 50, 60 years old to say, God, let me please get past this. I'm 50 and still thinking like this? He said, you're going to have to fight. Some of us know without a shadow of a doubt. Read that with me. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith, it does what? 
We also rejoice in our sufferings because we know, pick it up, that suffering produces perseverance. What you get through that moment, you find that suffering is not going to kill you. There is an inner determination that says, I can go on. See, I didn't found out we've been afraid of suffering, and that's why we've been given into distractions. But if you go ahead and embrace the season of pain that is in your space, then what you're going to do is find out that suffering is actually giving you determination to move forward. Y'all don't hear me. Suffering is actually building something on the inside, an internal fortitude. And some of what you experienced, you didn't crack up. My friend's favorite scripture, Renee, she says, we, we, are crushed, we are crushed, but we're not destroyed. We are confused and we're perplexed, but we still have our right mind. We are not struck down. So we done been through some things. And in us going through some things, you must understand suffering that you've tried to avoid is actually the energy you need. Perseverance, character, character, hope. Hmm. Y'all ready? This is December 31st. This is December 31st, and we should all know. This is what? How many, how many days in a year? So this is three what? Is it 365? Hey, I'm watching y'all. I used to smoke boat, so I can't catch up. <laughs> so I got to look at your eyes and see if that was true. Is that true? Okay, cool. Let's keep going. If we know this is 365, then read this next scripture with me. We know for sure. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, because worry of what, about his own things. Sufficient for the day its own trouble. Let me ask you, of the 364 days, did they take care of themselves? <laughs> so you know, I don't care where you are, ain't no need to worry what tonight is going to bring. Y'all ain't never heard that. I'm, I'm old. I'm old. So y'all never heard that. Ain't no need to worry what tonight is going to bring. Everybody, come on. <laughs> It'll be all over in the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Morning. Come on. It'll be all over in the morning. So on day number one, when you start thinking like you was thinking on day number one this time last year, on day number five, you got to stop tripping. You made it here. You made it to this moment. Y'all might, y'all made it. Say, tell somebody I made it. Tell somebody else I made it. And do not seek what you should eat or drink or have an anxious mind. We wanted to quit, but we learned this year an anxious mind causes us to depart. We understood. Now, some of us got anxious and decided, I, I got to get me a piece, a pie, sausage. Are y'all listening? And you got anxious. I ain't, hey, listen, I ain't got time to be playing with y'all. I'm preaching here today. I'm teaching you. And so now, everything I'm saying making sense because we're talking about 217. Where can I go from your spirit? Pick it up. Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend up in heaven, you are there. If I make my bed and show the place of the dead, behold, you are there. Listen, some of us found out you can't run from God. You can't box with him. And he going to be there every step of the way. Either you're going to surrender or die. Now the Lord had prepared and appointed a great fish to swallow, to swallow up Jonah. Pick it up. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Anybody been there? Anybody been to the point where people say, I ain't talk, seen you in a week or two. Where you been? Somebody ever say, how you doing? And you can't even fake. I'm good. You'd be like, don't even ask. And you don't want them to ask. You know, let's just skip the subject. 
Because here's what we know. If my people, this is what we learned. This is what you learned. You was going through your anxiety attacks and all these different things. The scripture is go. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek, crave, and require necessity of my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Provide if you pray. I put That's my emphasis. I learned this year. If my people who are called by, if you're going, you're going through, call on his name. Seek. We ain't talking about father. Now lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord of soul to keep. If it's die before I wake, pray the Lord of soul to take. Mm, 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 mm. That ain't what we're talking about. Over the teeth, over the gums, look our stomach, here it comes. Mm, 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 mm. Say when he heals my land, he's providing. How is he going to provide? Through prayer. Next one. Prayer. Now, this is Hebrew. I'm using the ancient Hebrew because I study the meaning of the origins of the words and what they meant because that's the original language. And then I go and study the modern Hebrew to understand how the letter correlates with the ancient Hebrew. And so prayer, sock, sock, a thought, a sweeping away in thought, offscoring. Rubbish, what is swept away. So when you pray, God is sweeping away some things. God is taking worries because he says, cast your cares upon me. You have covered yourself with a cloud so that your prayer can pass through. You have made us offscoring and refuse among the nations. Why are we going to need to pray? Because 2018 will be a trial for us all. Our entire life is going to be consumed. Our entire lives have been consumed by a false god. Now, I, I, again, I keep saying it. I was going to begin to teach on the Internet and stuff. You know how you see a black man being very uh, outgoing and outspoken? And he says stuff that's just going to upset white people. And you had that thought, you better stop, they're going to kill you. Because they put a collective fear in all of us because they've taken away all of our leaders. And in them taking away all of our leaders, what we fail to understand is that this is going to be a trial for us because they've taken away our leaders, but our leaders have now been replaced by AI, artificial intelligence. Who needs a Malcolm X when you can get a like? Who needs a Malcolm X when you can get a thumbs up? Who needs a Malcolm X? Who needs a Mega Evers? Who needs these people? Who needs them if the people have given over to this? But I, I forgot, it's midnight for y'all, but I'm, I'm, I'm rolling, so I ain't messing with y'all. Somebody trying to nod out. I bet you if I had some Coke and uh, Bacardi, and we tossed it up, or the blue cap or something like that, you'd be ready to get down. Well, get down on this because you're going to need it. Amen? Huh? Is somebody saying something to me? Okay, I'll say, my wife ain't saying nothing to me. That's somebody else saying that, but it's good. I don't care anymore. I take back, I care about you, but I just don't care anymore. Bring that next one up. Our current culture is unsustainable. Say this is unsustainable. No, 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 no. Y'all not listening. Y'all not hearing at all. Do you understand it came out this weekend that they are now selling human leather products? Human leather products. It was so gross that I couldn't even put it on the image to even show you because I was too concerned that it would put a nightmare in one of the child's minds. So people are donating their bodies and they're taking noses, faces, human, making leather shoes, heels with a face and a nose on them, coats with faces and nose and the whole, and it's leather. And just to get the wallet is $14,000. When I'm talking about Molac, Molac is here. 
So now we done been so far. Now the rage is to talk about you got a human leather wallet. Cannibalism. The movie that just came out. I got you, brother. The movie that just, you hit me afterwards. The movie that just came out this year was about cannibalism. And it won all these awards. It's about people eating people. Listen, they, uh, listen, I stopped. I was caught up in that daggone, what's that thing? Yeah. And I was going to kill so many people. Walking dead. Yeah, I was thinking about, you know, they come to me. I'm going to that eye. <laughs> y'all, see, but y'all understand, that's how I was thinking. Because I was sitting there saying, oh, I'm scared. I'm sitting there, I got goosebumps. I'm looking out the back window of my thing, making sure ain't nobody there, because we didn't have a, a, a curtain on the thing, on the thing, and I'm saying, ain't nobody looking at because you know it'll be dark, and so you can't see through your reflection. And I said, I'm going to have to turn this off, because if one of them come through here, they are going down. And God said, brother, you better open your eyes. They're acclimating you all to killing people. You better look at Grand Theft Auto, where you get points for raping girls. Did y'all hear me? Y'all ain't listening to me. But I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit right now. Pick that scripture back up. He answered, because of you of little faith, your lack of trust and confidence in the power of God, for I assure you most solemnly and say to you, if you have living faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here, and it will, if God's will, it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. But this kind of demon does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Now, I'm just introducing you. When I started studying on what was going on, it scared me. And I said, God, I don't even, do I even go on Facebook and talk about Facebook while I'm on Facebook? That's why I say to Facebook, y'all do some really good things. There's some really good things and people getting reunited and everything else but it's some sinister stuff because they didn't have to hire 8,000 people to watch the content because they didn't put this live thing on and so many people are being raped, suicide, and everything and they ain't catching it. Why would you give me the power to go live and you don't even know my psyche and have no regulations, no FCC regulations, no nothing? Why would I have the power to do that? They wouldn't let me drive until I was 16. They wouldn't let me buy porno until I was 18. So why is it on your child's phone and yours too? Oh, stop, D. Stop. Stop. I'm almost there. When Facebook was getting going, I had these people who would come up to me um, and they would say, you know, I'm not on social media. <laughs> and I would say, okay. <laughs> you know, you will be. And then they would say, they would say, no, 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 no. I value my real life interactions. I value the moment. I value presence and I value intimacy. And I would say, well, you're a conscientious objector. That's okay. You don't have to participate, but you know, we'll get you eventually. <coughs> and, and, and like, I don't know if I really understood the consequences of what I was saying <laughs> because it, the, un, uh, the unintended consequences of, 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 a, of a network when it grows to a billion or two billion people and it, and it, begin, and it, it literally changes your relationship with society, with each other, with, uh, you know, it, 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 it probably interferes with productivity in weird ways. It, God only knows what it's doing to, to our children's brains. You know, if the, if the, thought process that went into building these applications, Facebook being the first of them to really understand it, that thought process was all about how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible. Can you pause that, and that Rob? means that we need to sort no? of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while. Uh, you can pause that. He says, how do we consume as the reason you on Instagram? Because you're insecure. The reason you can't get off of it? Because you need somebody to tell you that you're okay. The reason you posting stuff is because you get a dopamine hit every time somebody that you don't even freaking know says they like. 
Social media has become the Holy Spirit. I know this is messing most of us up because he didn't got all of us. We can't go nowhere without a cell phone. We can't, we can't go to sleep. We checking it when we wake up. We looking at this. We doing all that. What did we do before this? Think. What did we do? Think. What did we do? Think. So when I'm telling you, and I feel, I said it 10 years ago. Was it seven years ago? This is a social experience. I wondered if the stuff that happened with my brain has anything to do with the cell phone because they just released something that was held back in 2000 in California that said cell phones cause brain cancer. Don't keep it near your desk. Don't put it in your pocket. Don't keep it, near, keep it, keep it at least two arms lengths away from you because the radiation is cooking your brain. And so your kids don't even have creativity. And you have been fooled. Oh, they know how to move these buttons. Oh, look, they fly. They doing this. They using minimal creativity to learn something. But if you teach them a freaking language, if you teach them how to play the keyboard, if you do anything other than let them get on that tablet, you'll see this is sinister. They have rewired the brains. Y'all got to know this. The kids don't give a darn about nobody, nothing. You and I, who were born in 66, 70, and probably 75, we're the last ones that played outside. We're the last ones that learn how to occupy ourselves outside of this. You know why it's quiet up in this joint right now? One, I don't care, and I know I'm all up in your goodies. I'm not in your goodies, but God is all up in your goodies. <laughs> I ain't mess with y'all. Y'all keep looking at me like that. I'm throwing it right back at you. So what is 18 going to be? Prayer process. Read this with me. Prayer is and will be our deliberately coming out into the tent of meeting under his cover. This fast this year is going to be different. Oh, I guarantee you it's going to be different. ATL, listen to me, it's going to be different. He took a group of us and we became one man, one body, one mind, and he showed us in 12 shows and 12 different outreaches and then all the other things that we do. It don't take a church of 5,000 to make a difference in the world. All it takes is a group of sold out people. No, 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 no. Father, daughter, ball was not made by me. It was made by you. When people said this was beautiful because you took all your stuff and came in that you would normally get paid for and said, I'm doing this for the kingdom. Why? So a young girl could be held up by her father and spent around and danced with. Do you know what kind of favor is coming back to your life in 2018? Do you know what kind of blessings is coming back to us? Because he says, I refresh those who refresh others. Do you know the kind of blessings that came off your life just because you sat here tonight and you heard the principal say on that video, I want to thank you because these kids are looking forward to eating, eating every weekend. That wasn't me. That was you, Dev. That was Kids Eat Free Team. That was all us running out doing our own thing. But this was going to be different. He's going to reveal our request as our desire swells towards him. This is all going to happen when we are all swept away in meditational thought. That's going to sweep away the rubbish, allowing our request and asking to be heard. Do you need anything from God? Say this, God will provide in 2018. The word provide means in Hebrew to see, to perceive. Provide is the ability to see beyond what is seen in the physical present. Listen, I don't care what you see. They was trying to stop me, and I get it because they love me. And they were saying in the hospital, D, you just need to get it together. I said, uh, in between shots, in between everything else, I said, mm -mm. I know activity when I feel it. We're going to do this. 
God will provide. You just got to use to see beyond what you see. Sometimes he needs you to do it after you've been through some stuff. Because then when you do it, your motives are pure. <laughs> Say 217, 2017 was about roots. The number one, the number two, the number four, the number seven, 14 and 28 are all perfect numbers. They're all what? Don't argue with God because I know that God, I'm a nice man because he broke this for me. Listen, last year was my eighth fast. Eight, the number of new beginnings. This year is the church's what? Eighth fast. The number of new what? Beginnings. Het. Being the letter of life and wisdom. Say there are no coincidences with God when it comes to numbers. Number one re really means ambition, power, positivity. It means energies. It means pioneering. It means raw energy. It means self-leadership. It means creating your own reality. Number one. Zero. It means it's infinite perfection, the divine creator. Eight. The number of new beginnings, it's an equalizer. It's infinity. Seven is the number of completion. See, some of us want to go ahead and start to fast. I'm getting mine in. I'm not waiting until we get started. I get that. But I get you to challenge and say, you wasn't, really, you wasn't eager to be spiritual all year long. Now you want to get greedy. Check your motives even in your fasting. Here's how I'm blessed. The fast starts on the seventh. It ends on the 28th. In the year 2018. And everything has to do with beginnings, new perfect, and all of this. I'm believing God, his spirit is going to pour out on us. I'm not bragging, but we was one of the first churches in this metropolitan area to begin to do this corporate fast. And many of us have benefited, and those who have gone on, they have benefited well. This one comes out by fasting, praying. What do you need from God? 2018 is about a new beginning. 2018. But you're going to need to be prepared spiritually. Hey, I'm giving you my best that I can give you. 17 was preparation. 18 is promise. And guess what we're going to go through? Adversity. Something new don't always mean a party. It means I'm going to allow something new in your life, but it's going to do something that you ain't never seen it do before. Transform you. Gave you the best I can get. Hey, listen, let me tell you something. I'm glad for y'all hanging with me through all of this and what God has been doing. Best thing that ever happened. And all the prayer cards you sent me, keep giving them to me. Why? Because I know what God is doing. And he uses you to lift my arms up, my wife's arms up. This has been a great year. It's been a what? It's been a what? And so now we're going to go to our knees and thank God for 2018, if you're physically able, thank him for your family. Thank him in advance. Thank him for what he's done and ask him to give you the supernatural. Because did I get to tell you all, 2018 means that you will now see supernatural that you couldn't see before. Because it's a year of completion. But if you get spiritual, you're going to be there. I'm going to see what the end is going to be. Father, we thank you that in this time of our life, you have found us on our knees worshiping you. Father, we thank you for what you have done. We thank you for every meal you provided for us. We thank you for every bill you paid. We thank you for every worry that we had, God. We thank you for your peace, God. 
We thank you that when we saw stuff going on with our immediate family that we didn't lose it, God. But somehow we found a way to maintain, God. Father, I thank you for my friend who went through with his son this year. And you kept him, God. You kept him and you made him better, God. Father, we thank you for making us better people. And we thank you in advance that we will become spiritual. God, we thank you that we are heeding your warning of getting prepared for what you are to bring. God, we thank you for your forgiveness. Father, we thank you for every word you forgave us for saying last year, Lord. For everything we did out of anger or spite, and you forgave us anyway, Lord. Father, we thank you for healing. Father, I thank you for every test I took that you taught me how not to worry, God. Father, I thank you for the nights that we all have cried and soaked our pillows with tears. Father, I thank you that some was getting put out, some got put out, but you still provided, God. Father, we thank you for helping us keep our egos intact all year long, and we ask that you would bless us this year, Lord. Now, God, bless us financially, Lord. Father, say this, I need a breakthrough. I need a breakthrough. And I'm asking you, the blesser of witty inventions, to give me an idea ideas this year. Help me take my family to the next level. Now I pray for my single mothers and my single fathers. May God keep you. This struggle is hard. This struggle is long. This struggle is arduous. But this struggle is real. You are a real parent and you are doing what it takes Yes, you feel like giving up, but don't let the kids see it. Be strong. Keep going. Because you're going to look up one day with a beam in your eye and understand what it was all about. Father, bless our health right now. We got all kinds of stuff happening, God, but we thank you that you're a God of healing. And you will heal us today. Father, be with our rebellious, we call them faithful child. But if the demons should try to take over and get them to be all caught up in rebellion, give us strength, Lord, to outwit the devil in our own homes. And then, Father, the same way Akiana spoke on about her marriage, bless someone to recognize it ain't the person they're dealing with is them. And let them to see it. Now, Father, I thank you for every show, if you allow us to do it this year. I thank you that Fabulously 40 will begin to continue to be the movement. Father, bring more people to the cast and more people to hell. And I thank you that by faith we started out with 25, 30 people in the audience. And you have been blessing continually. And it was never about numbers, it was about some. For those who fell this year, last year, may God forgive you. Get up. Breakthrough. Don't argue. All those in agreement said, Amen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Come on, come on. Come on, Happy New Year. Come on. Come on, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Come on. Happy New Year to somebody.